Hello, this is Dr. Bob and Debbie DeMaria with another Half of Health for you. Do you know that every year in America, in the last two years of the statistics that I've read, 45 million prescriptions for asthma alone. So tonight, we're going to talk about kids' health. We have an epidemic that's occurring in America today. Do you know what that epidemic is? Kids are subluxated, which we'll talk about before the program is over. But the really frightening epidemic is this little red disc and cube of sugar. See, Dr. Bob, what is that? Right now, they estimate that one-third of the kids born between 2000 and 2010 are going to become diabetics. Diabetes is the third biggest killer in our society today. You know what bothers me right now? is we have chubby kids in America. Kids don't play anymore. Chubby kids have chubby parents. So something has to be done. To win at this game, we have to lose. We have to lose weight. To win at this game, we have to improve mechanics. There's something called techno-neck, where these kids' heads are forward. If we don't make a decision and have a revolution now in America, the state of health is going to deteriorate so rapidly that as a country, we won't even be able to survive because all of our income is going to be used for health care. That's a sobering thought, isn't it? It is really a sobering thought. And what it is is that people don't realize that the state of the baby's health starts in the womb of the mother. That's a good point, Deb. It starts in how is the mother taking care of herself prior to becoming pregnant and then while she has the baby inside of her. That is so important that the baby gets the proper nutrients for brain function. And that, I don't think people even think about that because I know being pregnant and not really being educated at that time, for me, I could go to the uh, doctor, see that I didn't gain so much weight, and then guess what I would do? Eat ice cream. I did. <laughs> I would go out and eat my favorite ice cream. Thank goodness I would always get really good ice cream. I didn't get chemically laced ice cream, but I'll tell you what, that's what I did because it was like a reward for not putting on weight. Now, I did also watch what I eat the intake of nutritional support I took, Dr. Bob, if you remember, it was a lot of nutritional support and our children came out wonderfully. But Dr. Bob, that brings up another part of a child's life. What was their birth experience? Well, you know what, just before I go to the birth experience is iodine. I've been done research all over the world. I listened to so many wonderful speakers. And one particular speaker said something to me that resonates in my mind every day. I personally take 12 milligrams of iodine every day. And when this gentleman was talking, he said he believes that one of the leading causes of dysfunction neurologically, including Down syndrome, is a lack of iodine. Bromine, fluorine, and chlorine are antagonistic to iodine, can literally take iodine out of the body. So I just want you to know right now, if you're pregnant, or if you're thinking about getting pregnant, you may want to uh, purchase my book, Dr. Bob's Drugless Guide to Balancing Female Hormones, and read the chapter on thyroid. Or go to the internet and type in my name, Dr. Bob DeMaria, slash iodine or thyroid, and watch some of the segments on there. Now, Debbie brought up something that's very, very interesting. Gravity never takes a vacation. Gravity is a part of the curse. If you go to the Bible in Isaiah, it said that the devil or Satan fell out of heaven, which would connotate gravity. So gravity is definitely an issue, and gravity never takes a vacation. Debbie's going to be so kind to hold this for me. So, so many people today, this is kind of a, 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 another sobering thought. It's almost like we treat pregnancy as a disease. And when a woman is pregnant, they schedule birth, C-section. So what happens with a, with a regular uh, vaginal birth is the, the baby gently should come out of the birth canal. But sometimes the baby may have impairment. And so they'll use a forceps or an instrument and literally can major, cause major subluxation. 
So if a child, if you have a child at home right now, and you said my child's been sick since birth, it's very logically possible that their spine could be misaligned. You see a child? Yes, because see, children can have misalignment which impairs function. So pulling that baby out, and then the C-section, that they literally slice the baby and they aggressively will take the baby out. See, that birth canal, that process of the vagina squeezing on the head of the baby, allows that muscle tone just to have those few moments to be ready for gravity. And actually, the very first subluxation that can impact somebody is at the birth canal. And then over time, the child's going to raise their head up. And then when they learn to walk, and they fall down, that can cause low back subluxation. Or they fall with outstretched arms, that can cause neck and mid back subluxation. So what we've learned from our research at North Coast Chiropractic, that scoliosis could actually be a result of misalignment in the spine. I want you to look at me right now. So if a person has a trauma to the head, playing soccer, falling off a bicycle, whatever, and their head's like this, how many people do you see on the planet today that are walking around like this? You know what the body does? It's wonderfully made. You are compensate. So your eyes are always parallel to the floor. So misalignment of the spine. So when the program is finished, or if you turn your uh, volume up really loud, go and look at yourself in the mirror. Close your eyes, turn your head left and right, and look at yourself. And if your head is tilted off to one side, you may have had a trauma. If your head is straight, but your neck is another position, you could have chronic spinal problems that need to be corrected because over time, you'll start to break down, Deb. So, Dr. Bob, I want you to say that one more time before I interject. Why are they putting their head up and down and then they open their eyes and they look in the mirror, okay? So by closing your eyes and taking your head left and right, you're, uh, you're totally distracting your nervous system right now, so you have eliminated spatial orientation. So when you look in the mirror, you're gonna see a true picture of what's going on and if you look at this diagram I have here, this is what a normal side neck looks like. This person right here, you can see that the head is very, very forward. This is major subluxation or misalignment. This would be the MRI of this person. And if you look really, really close right here now, that area, that spinal cord is being impaired. But what we're doing at our office is we have CSI technology. This is a thermography. This person's spine was misaligned or subluxated, and right here, this massive amount of heat above, but it's not going below. This is not a good scan of someone. And what we do in our practice is that we help minimize and eliminate those distortions and patterns, Deb. And you know what? Those distortions can cause a lot of different things. I want to bring up something that people feel are, it's like a childhood disease almost in a way, and it's children's fevers. Mm. Dr. Bob, people are frantic when their child's temperature raises. And you know, there are some cases where you should have quite concern, but there's often times cases that it's a sign of teething, it's a sign of growth, or it's just a sign of a calcium deficiency. And so I know one of the things in our home, which was precious to us, is they had a chiropractor as a father, but our children got adjusted. And within a short period of time, their temperature lowered. So sometimes we don't let the body heal itself. We don't let it go through its natural processes. And we start putting either potions or we start intaking things like Tylenol or baby aspirin, whatever it might be out there. And we're masking over what really the natural tendency of the body needs to go from there. So I know, Dr. Bob, you have some insight on that. Well, it's kind of very fascinating. Right now, if you have a child at home it's teething, what Debbie just said is so absolutely true. The temperature is going to increase because of lack of calcium. So in our practice, we use calcium citrate, which is an acid-based calcium that's very easily absorbed. We don't promote the digestive calcium because that's a little bit more challenging to be absorbed. And what Debbie was also saying is the brainstem literally is right here in the upper part of the neck. And what we have oftentimes found, and we are able to scan children with a thermography tool, is they can have misalignment in their spine that impairs this lower part of the brainstem impacting 
temperature. And I'm going to tell you right now, we have had children come into our office with temperatures of 99, 100, 101, did an assessment to their spine, gently manipulate their spine either with an instrument or with our hands, and I am telling you, in less than seconds, temperature changes because the brain is starting to be able to send the messages down. You want your children, and I'm going to tell you right now, moms and dads, you, and grandmas and grandpas and church leaders, you don't want to be giving your child soda pop because soda has sugar in it. I don't want you to give them diet soda either. You want to minimize sugar. Now, right now in America, sugar is just rampant. It's everywhere. But sugar takes minerals out of the body, and one of those minerals happens to be calcium. So calcium deficiency commonly can cause relentless fevers. Dr. Bob, I have a passion for children, and oftentimes you come into our practice, and it actually looks like a pediatrician office, you know, like the after school time or early morning where moms are out. It's because we don't want to put drugs in kids that don't necessarily need to go in. And I think that's our tendency is we feel that that is its relief. And it really isn't. It's not getting to the cause of the problem. So my idea for you is have your child checked for subluxation. And two, just like Dr. Bob said now, watch the foods that we give. I want to give a point here to especially new moms. Don't give your children food too early. We oftentimes are feeding our kids before the digestive system is really functioning. And don't start with cereal. Start with something like yams. That's a neutral food. Brown rice. That's a grain, though, so you might want to consider not putting that at too fast. It's really important for us to watch how we develop our children in each one of their systems. Make sure as they get older that we give them things for their brain so their brain starts to have a good brain function, that they can focus in school. And oils, Dr. Bob, are as important to children as they are as important to adults. I think it's really as important as Debbie touched on the subject, which is oil. And that's one of the reasons that we wrote Dr. Bob's Guide to Stop ADHD in 18 Days. This book is all about fat metabolism. So if you have a child at home right now that maybe is having some issues with focus, they need good oil. Just like gentlemen, you know that you have to have the right oil for your motor vehicle to, op to function optimally. You, you need to have the right oil in their brain. One last thought before we take a break. I would not give a child soy ever. What's happening right now is the average age for a girl to start their secondary sexual characteristics is down to eight years old right now. And soy puts too much estrogen in the body and does the same thing for young boys. Actually, we don't promote soy for anybody. And the reason is, is that it has a natural affinity for aluminum, it depletes the amount of zinc, it does not have trypsin in it, and if a gentleman is taking soy products, it's going to increase his estrogen with the potential to have prostate challenges. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. This is Drs. Bob Kaysen and Anthony DiMaria with a continuation of an awesome half off health on kids' health. Right now, I know that you could have a child at home that has emotional distress, ADHD, whatever they may be labeled. We see kids in our office all the time that always respond to drugless natural chiropractic care. Right, Dr. Anthony? That is for sure. One of the things that we were just talking about before the break was how ADHD and autism are buzzwords out there and the increasing likelihood of ADHD and autism out there. But we find commonly, too, is we'll have kids that come into our practice that have been labeled ADHD or autism, and the medical diagnosis doesn't fit their case. So we are very cautious when labeling children because they shouldn't wear those labels as badges. It's something about every single kid that comes into our office and in your lives is special and each of their needs chiropractically should be taken care of and looked at specially. There's no cookie cutter formula for every single person. Everybody is their own unique individual 
and we treat them as such when they come into our office. That's really awesome. Do you have anything you want to add, Dr. Kaysen? I think, too, that these kids, especially in How to Stop ADHD in 18 Days, these kids are actually brilliant. It's just that they're getting fed the wrong kind of fuel in their body, like the Pop-Tarts, and I know the Twinkies, and the peanut butter, and all these things that may have an underlying high fructose corn syrup in them, causing them just for their brain to shut off. So I think it's really important. It starts with the parents, educating the parents what kind of fuels they can be giving their children for the brain health so that they can think clearly. I think it's so fascinating that when you think about the doctors at North Coast Chiropractic, we talk about food so much. And one of the reasons that we do is that people are really uninformed about the food. So Dr. Kaysen just made a couple comments. We also know because of our studies is that what you eat can cause misalignment in the spine. And the terminology is called a visceral, that's organ, somatic, which is muscle tissue, subluxation. The subluxation is when a bone goes out of alignment. And we've had guests on in the past that through the grace of God they showed up at our doorstep and they've had relentless challenges and we did a diet analysis on them where we had them journal and we just circle foods that cause pain. And Dr. Kaysen mentioned two very popular foods are Pop-Tarts and Twinkies. And I know that these are basically a staple, not counting peanut butter. So what I'm showing you right now are the three basic food groups in America. I'm being sarcastic, by the way. It's peanut butter, Pop-Tarts, and Twinkies. And I do know that when there's a hurricane in the United States, I read this statistically, the number one food that Walmart sends to hurricane victims happens to be strawberry Pop-Tarts. I call those little decons in a box, by the way, for human beings. These are our tricks. Now, if you read, if you have tricks at home, when the program is done, I want you to go and look at the ingredients. And you're going to see sugar. You're going to see potentially high fructose corn syrup. You're going to see partially hydrogenated oils. You're going to have food coloring in here. And without being really unkind, this could be any cereal. These are like little death balls. So if you have a child that's eating this every day and you're wondering why they're not performing optimally, you're not putting the right fuel inside of the body. So we are literally pleading with you right now to assess what are you placing inside of your child. And here's something that I really have a real major challenge with today, and that's Gatorade. Gatorade's name has been changed and the bottle has been upended to look a little bit more eye appealing for today's society and the name has been changed to G. All I want you to do is I want you to look at the ingredients that's in this product. There's sugar, oftentimes there's something called sucralose in here, and there are food coloring. See this, this color that comes in here, that, that's not magic, that's a chemical. So what happens with kids today, when they're putting these food colorings in their body, it literally is an excitotoxin that impacts brain health in a negative way. And I know that there are some different types of G that have something in it called brominated vegetable oil. And I know from my experience, and you could do a search engine on this, brominated vegetable oil, bromine is antagonistic to iodine. Now, I want you to really listen to what I'm going to share with you right now. You may have a child that's anywhere between 7 and 12-year-old athlete playing little league, soccer, football, whatever, volleyball and you start to give them G because you watched the media and they, G is going to make them hyper powerful athlete. Then all of a sudden, a month or two into drinking G, they start having complaints of growing pains. And you think, huh, what's going on with my child? They're not performing 100%. The brominated vegetable oil has the potential to sabotage the thyroid gland cold hands, cold feet, lack of calcium, and pain. Do you remember at the first segment, Debbie and I talked about fevers? G. Now, I know it might sound far-fetched. I've been doing this since 1978. We've touched three-quarters of a million people. We have people come in our office, hundreds of people come into our office every week. The people have stories. We just ask the right questions. We're here to make a difference for you. No matter where you're at in the world right now, if you have a child that is not responding to a traditional Western health care, come and see the drugless doctors. We'll figure it out. We will do everything that we can to make a difference in you or your child's life. Pretty profound. It's like we have this 
mantle that we need to make a difference, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things that Dr. Kaysen, Dr. Bob, and myself want to educate people about is that the need for children in chiropractic care, because it's a really common question when people see the amount of kids that are in our office and they'll say, well, I never knew that kids needed chiropractic care. You know, I thought that chiropractic care was when you're old or stiff. And that's one of the things that we'd like to do is to educate our patients about why it's so important to have kids get chiropractic care. I know in the earlier segment they talked about coming through the birth canal and that trauma that happens to the baby just when it's present. I know that we're always updating information on our Facebook and Twitter pages. And recently we had some discussion about why it's important to have kids in chiropractic based on a picture of a birth and how the baby was being pulled out of the mom's birth canal. All of these are just complicating factors to why kids actually need chiropractic care. And from all the research that we've done, it's, it's so vitally important to get them in when they're kids because you could think of kids as having only one layer on the onion and as they get older, each consecutive layer is another layer of stress and or the foods they're eating or traumas that build up over time. And then when they come and see us and they're 35 years old, they hit themselves in the head and they say, I should have came in to get chiropractic care when I was a kid because I know that my life would be different. So that is very impactful when we know that we can impact people's lives for generations based on the chiropractic care that they get in our office. So Dr. K, since, since you guys have been in office, what would be some of the biggest miracles that you've personally witnessed? Because I know that kids just love Dr. K. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody loves Dr. K, but kids, you know what they say? I want the she doctor. I want the <laughs> she chiropractor. I think the, um, just the, within the few weeks of being in the office, I know that we have someone in our office and um, I think she's been labeled as autistic, but I'm not really sure if that's her specific diagnosis. Now, just learning about diet and more things, but just the difference of seeing from one adjustment to the other, just how she lays on the table and she loves getting adjusted. After she gets an adjustment, she's happy, she's excited. I know that um, her family sees how she reacts differently after the adjustment. I know also we've seen some